Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of Pod Strickland. I'm your host, 20 episode 278. I'm joined as always by my co-host Prez. That is at underscore presidente on Twitter. Prez, how are you doing on this? Yep, we're we have just want everybody to know that me and Prez are really cool. We have awesome social lives. Um, we're definitely not recording this on a Friday night. Yeah, and I definitely didn't delay the recording of this podcast to properly cook the pasta sauce I was making. <laughs> yes, we're doing. We're we're both just at the club, actually, um, just really living it up on a Friday night here. Yeah, my pasta sauce wasn't completely worth it. Whatever you may be thinking. Yeah, we're definitely going to be popping bottles. Uh, all right, before we get started, I have to make a few announcements. The first being that the Strickland has an Instagram. Please check that out. That is at the strict.land on Instagram. Give us a follow. We're posting all kinds of new content on there. The Strickland also has a YouTube channel where you may be watching this podcast. If you are and you haven't already, please hit like and then also subscribe to the channel. That would be a huge help to us. Furthermore, the Strickland has new merch. Check it out. Uh, mine is coming tomorrow. I'm very excited for my sweatshirts, for my t-shirts, sweatpants. You want it. We got it. Check it out. We're going to have new stuff dropping in the next few weeks. Also, finally, the Strickland has a Patreon, which you can subscribe to. There are a number of different tiers. There is a $6 tier that comes with access to this pod right here, Pod Strickland. That I host every Friday with Prez. You also get access to the Strickland mailbag that comes out every other week. Hosted by Andrew Steele, a.k.a. Doug, a.k.a. The Doug Bag, alongside Dallas Amico. You also get access to the Strickland Discord, where the conversation never stops. There are further tiers. There's a $9 tier that comes with access to Strickland, Roll, my solo pod, where I rant and rave about the Knicks even more. You also get access to wonderful weekly premium articles by Matthew Miranda, one of the best in the business. There are further tiers. There's a $15 tier, $30 tier, $50 tier, and $100 tier. Let's go with a variety of additional benefits like listening in on pod recordings, merchandise discounts, and even potentially co-hosting a podcast alongside yours truly one day, whether you choose to subscribe or not. None of this would be possible without you. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, the Knicks dropped their second in a row uh, to the Kings, 122-117. Uh, a game, quite frankly, they probably should have won even with Jalen Brunson missing the uh, entire second half, re-aggravating a sore left foot. Um, not because they were executing wonderful, gorgeous offense, purely because they got a bunch of fucking wide-open shots and second-chance opportunities, and they just couldn't make shit. Um, and it's all right. Look, that happens. I'm not that upset about it. It's an annoying one to drop, but it's also, you know, they've been on a heater. They went on a nine-game win streak. They were on fire for a while probably coming back down to earth a little bit here collectively. And also I think um, you're seeing a little bit of fatigue setting in for certain players uh, specifically, I would say the, the three that uh, very obvious it, it, to me anyway, uh, were RJ Barrett, Emmanuel quickly and one Julius Randall. Um, so I don't know. I, I guess you just watched this today. Uh, so I'll let you kind of just give your thoughts on whatever the game was. I, I will say this. I didn't think RJ Barrett played a good game. Um, I also thought some of the criticism of him was a bit much. And I thought some of the criticism in general of like the Knicks defense was a bit much collectively, like sure. Were there individual fuck ups? Absolutely. Uh, Julius Randall was just, did not have any juice. He got burned on multiple ISOs, which is kind of weird to see because that's his strength really um, defensively. He's, he's a very good isolation defender and he just got cooked yesterday. Um, but I thought collectively, like you're playing a team that is literally number one in the league in offensive rating. You're going to give up some points. And, um, you know, I think they average 121.8 per game for the season. They scored 122 last night. So you basically held them to their average. Um, is that great? Is that perfect? No. But I do think the Knicks, comp like, again, they competed. I never feel like I watched this team and, and and I, I never feel that they cheat me on effort overall. Like, yeah, sometimes there'll be individual players that you're like, well, he didn't really give it his all tonight. Uh, I, I can't say that that was how I felt about RJ Barrett or anybody really on the team yesterday. I don't think effort was an issue. 
And, 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 you know, we talked about this briefly, but like, did RJ fuck up some stuff on defense? Yeah, he did. But like, I, I don't think this would, th- again, this continues the trend of like, is he fucking shit up on defense? Sure. But this to me is very different from like some of the stuff that was way more concerning before the all-star break that we talked about a lot at that time. Um, so that was just, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there before you, uh, you jumped in with your thoughts. Yeah, a couple of things. And I think I agree with all of that. Um, really good offenses like that, particularly ones that are based on movement, right? Because you not all really great offenses are based on movement. Like our offense is really good and it's not based on movement at all. Boston's offense is really good and it's not based on movement at all. Um, so those those offenses like ours in Boston are in some ways – a little easier to game plan for. There's just like teams just can't do anything with Mitch teams can't do anything with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, just hitting crazy shots from everywhere. Right. And just dunking when they're close to the hoop. Like there's just some raw talent advantages that allow those offenses to be really good. The Kings are a whole nother animal because they got lots of great shooters and even even for great shooters, they sh- I should point out like they hit a lot of fucking hard shots yesterday. Malik Monk made the most annoying shots yesterday, and like, <laughs> and th- see, and this is the thing that I was talking about. Like, were there instances of Julius getting roasted in ISOs? Yeah, there were. Like Monk made, pr- I think three or four shots on him that I'm just like, okay, like there's literally nothing you can do about. Some yeah, of like he that. he made a three on him that was just like fading to his right. With the hand, Her, like, Herter like, had Herter had the craziest one, like in the fourth quarter. That was just like, oh, oh god, I hate. He's yeah. he's just a phenomenal shooter, and I mean, so is Monk. They're both really good shooters who can put the ball on the deck too and shoot off dribble and run around like eighteen screens per possession. And you even see that shit rubbing off on Keegan. Keegan Keegan took some hard. At, he didn't shoot as well as they did, but he took some hard ass threes. Where I was like, damn, all right, dude, all right, young fella. Like he was throwing up some heat but that's just how their offense works they got talented shooters who know how to shoot out of a variety of situations and just never fucking stop moving and never stop screening like we did a good job uh i would say on for the first two-thirds of the game on De'Aaron fox who's like their biggest scorer and everybody else on the kings just was hitting all types of really good shots and um you know it's hard to keep De'Aaron fox bottled up for the whole game and in the second half, he shook loose. There was, there was one play that I just I couldn't I couldn't help but laugh. He he crossed the ever loving shit out of Josh Hart, and Josh Hart just immediately was like no, and then just like wrapped him up. Not like yeah. a hard foul or anything, but he just wrapped it up. But I was like, that's that's some shit that you only see in like you playing like twenty one. Like somebody gets the best of you with a crossover, and you're just like, no, nope, no, nope, you're not getting the basket. Fuck you. We're starting this possession over, and yeah. like he can do that. He can do that. Right. Like from time to time. So it's, you know, it's just really tough. And when they'll got, when those players are moving around like that at different sizes and different parts of the court, unless you're a really versatile defender, it's, it's really difficult. Like RJ's not built to he's, he's, I prefer him in ISO and helping and chasing is probably the worst aspect of his defense because it's a mix of him of him needing to be nimble and fast, which he is neither of those things. And then he it's, it's a game of quick decisions on defense. And he's also bad at that. And even if you keep up with these fuckers behind like 17 screens, then you got to contest and he's not like the best at doing con- contests because his reaction time is a little, a little slow and his wingspan is good, but not great. So like, Fucking Malik Monk jumps like 9,000 feet in the air when he shoots. So does Kevin Herter, and Kevin Herter is not even short. And then Keegan Murray is obviously like six foot nine. So, like, whether it's RJ or someone else, it's just it's just really difficult. And you even saw it with, with IQ sometimes, where it's the opposite problem. Like, IQ is really good at going around screens, but, like, even with his long arms, he's still like 6'3", 6'4", or whatever. So when these guys who are tall are coming around screens and jumping high, like, it's... It's hard for anybody to contest that, like unless you happen well, to be some sort of six foot six, nimble, long arm defender, which there are not many in the league. <laughs> well, you know, there was a a certain Knicks account today that uh, pointed out that Emmanuel quickly is apparently 
uh, in DHOs, he's a massive problem uh, for the Knicks defense, apparently. Wait, um, what? Uh, our good friend, that his name is Tommy. We don't need to finish the rest oh, of God. it. Yeah, I've I've managed to uh, manipulate the algorithms and such that my life is mostly free unless somebody messaged me, messages me a screen cap. Uh, yeah. That is, wow, okay. The less we say about that, the better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are just some people who... Um, who are miserable and um you know if if you look i, I look i i criticized quickly i mean and this is the thing with quickly last night like people were like the de- i thought the defense was fine like was, was he fine, perfect right? he was no. fine he was fine he was yeah. nobody and nobody was perfect on defense like as josh hart played a fucking amazing game yesterday and even he wasn't perfect on defense he fucked up some shit so it's like like that's the pressure that the kings put on you they're just that dynamic offensively you're going to fuck some shit up it's okay that th- happens um but I don't like think people Like, I mean, we're weird and watch the Kings, but but I don't think people put people still think they're the the Kings. Kings. Yeah, exactly. They're like, if you tell them they have the number one O rating, people are just gonna be like, all right, and then just like memory hole it and just pretend you didn't say anything. Um, but real quick before I forget, a couple other things that stood out to me just watching the game. The one thing I thought we did pretty poorly, um, in two different ways was our passing um one is the kings the kings dared brunson and randall to pass through pressure and randall did his thing where he holds the ball really late and he did some fucking rapid he did like a lot of actual really impressive rabbit out the hat type passes but sometimes i'm like can you just pass it like fast and quick (laughs) <laughs> yeah, can you just can you just make a normal fucking can you just make a quick decision? Because like like the thing that pisses me off with Julius, and I'm not gonna do like again, I, he's earned enough goodwill. He's allowed to have two bad games. Yeah, and he, and in some games like this, he can like take fucking long, and people be like up his shirt, and he'll still fucking like one hand rocket somehow because he's he he's it's so crazy. He predetermines what he's looking for out of the double team, and it's like. He's like, I'm only going to do galaxy yeah. brain passes, but it he, works sometimes, which is crazy. <laughs> he, he passes too often just to get an assist rather than to pass, like to move the ball. Right, right. He's um, like, I'm waiting for my guy to be open across the court. Yeah, I, I thought I thought they fucked like he, he fucked up a bunch of that stuff. Um, I thought like I didn't love the Grimes. He, he shot the ball really well. And actually, I think he should have played more, especially down the stretch of the game. I think he needed to come back in. So I know um, what you're about to say about Grimes, and that was the next thing I was going to say. And it wasn't just Grimes. It was Grimes and also Josh Hart, which is funny because they both do the same shit. Yeah, stop <laughs> stop doing dump-off passes when everybody knows you're going to do a dump-off pass. It's like, like, shoot the ball. It's fine. And, you and got, you know you got, These guys are fucking, like, elite athletes, both of them. And it's like, yo, you know you could just, like, run into people. You can do that. Yeah, and, and I just – it's really frustrating because I'm just like, what is the perp- – like – like you've already achieved you're actually you've already opened up the thing that you want to open up with the passing and like look this is part of grimes it this it's weirder with heart because he's a veteran so you're just like okay this is just like a thing we have to like this is just who you are this is not like he's all of a sudden going to develop yeah. like yeah heart is just it, le- a little less comfortable doing that in the half court than he, yeah which so, is funny because it's like bro he, he'll like like wrong foot euro step wrong hand finish through four people if it's transition but if it's half court he's like oh they have to dump off yeah <laughs> and, and so like with grimes i just think like he's the biggest development right that he made to start the year that we all were like commenting on was like oh man he's like such a good passer off of drives and he's almost leaned into one driving at the expense of shooting which is why i was happy that he i was happy he took 10 threes last night I was yeah. like, get him up. That's what you like. I get those shots up. Um, but the also next, like the next step is like you can drive to score, you can drive to pass. You need to be able to like sometimes just change gears on those drives. It doesn't have to be fifth gear every time, like dunk or dump off. And that's where, like, you know, for quickly it's it's often the floater. For Grimes, I don't think I've ever seen him take a floater. It could be you just slow down and take a mid-range shot and then you can build counters off of that you can do a um a mid-range hezzy and then continue to the hoop because you have a really quick acceleration first step or whatever so like that's definitely the next step is for him to just a attack more to attack not just to dump off and then b to just 
not not necessarily probe because it's not even that serious, but like just have a little bit of change of pace on those drives. Um, he's just like it, it's nitpicky, but like that would just be, that would just make his game so much more dynamic and and you we know like I I, I would bet that he could make mid range jump shots just the way he shoots like quickly can make mid range jump shots, but he has to like counter and do little fades and stuff. But Grimes is just, dude, you just jump like 10 feet in the air and shoot that thing. Like not that hard. <laughs> um, yeah. And so what I was going to say is that like, <clears throat> he, he just, he, he like he, the, the team in general, but he specifically just like less, less could be more sometimes for him. Yeah. Um, doesn't need to overcomplicate it. Uh, but I do think he needed to play more, I, I thought he should have come back in sooner. He had some long rest. Yeah, I kind of I was watching and he came back in and I was like, oh yeah. My reaction was like, oh yeah, Grimes. Like, yeah, I forgot he, about him. <laughs> he, he needed to come back in sooner than he did. Um, I know that Randall was getting cooked a little bit defensively yesterday, but like I think the Knicks at a certain point probably should have considered going small, whether that be with Obi and Randall together or just Randall with a bunch of wings and guards. I don't know. I think they should have considered it. I didn't hate like what they did for the most part i think they played three minutes yesterday with randall at the five um i thought hartenstein played a pretty decent game uh i I didn't like mitch's game yesterday i thought mitch had no fucking he's got to figure like i understand he has to i i get like he's had foul trouble before with guys like sabonis and he got into foul trouble yesterday with sabonis uh and other guys but like he's got to figure out how to okay you don't want to jump at a pump fake and you want to and you want to avoid fouling. That's fine, but you can't just let Sabonis like. And I know Sabonis is strong, but it can't be so easy for him to just body his way into the paint on you. That just it, it can't be that easy. It can't be so easy for him to get to exactly where he wants to go, and then you just put your hand straight up, and it's like, yeah, you're contesting it, but it's not a real contest. Like it's a pretty easy shot for him. Like it was a bad game for him. He's got to figure that out. Um, and he struggled. Like he's look, we're gonna play Jokic in a, in a week. Like. He struggled with, and everybody struggles with Jokic, but it's a very specific way he struggles with these guys. And it's like the I'll say of- this much though: though, like Jokic, Embiid, and Sabonis are probably the three strongest centers in the league. Yeah, but that's fine. I'm not asking him to body those guys. I'm asking you to like fight. You can't just fucking like let Sabonis go wherever the fuck he wants and just stand there with your hands up and do nothing. Like, and then the pivot can't be like get frustrated and reach down and foul him. Like, that's the thing with me. Like, I like to me like he. There's only so much you can do to like fight with someone like Sabonis, who's not no, only but fucking. He's not fighting. He's not fighting. Like you, like he's not getting into a stance. He's not getting low. He's just up. He's standing pretty, pretty much straight up, hands up, making sure he's not fouling. Like, do you know how easy it is for a guy like Sabonis to back you down if you're just not in a stance at all? Well, yeah, you have you to. You low? have to try to get in a stance, and and Mitch and, and like... he doesn't. He doesn't do. And this is this is why post players, guys that have real post skills always give him a problem because he doesn't fucking get in a stance. He doesn't crouch. He doesn't try to get under the guys. He's always just standing straight up. Basically. He has, a pretty, like, he has a pretty high center of gravity, which makes it tough. I'm not saying he's not, he, he you're, but, but you're, that, that makes it even more necessary for him to like do that. Cause he, he has to like, he literally has to, because you're right. He does have a high center of gravity. And this is like, this is an issue for him. And it's an issue for Obi to a lesser extent too. Um, where like, they just don't, get into that stance sometimes and so they can get back down pretty easily uh and like sabonis yeah he's an awesome player but again like you know if if the point if we're saying mitch has defensive player of the year capability upside whatever like these are the matchups where you need him to fucking step up and um you know like i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not killing mitch here like i i don't think like like he's obviously been a plus player for us this year. He's been an impact player for us this year. Um, he's clearly bounced back from a lot of the shit he was dealing with last year, getting back into shape and all that type of stuff. But like, I need him. I need. I need more. I need more. Like, if the guy's an elite defender, like I need more in matchups like this. That's not to say lockdown Sabonis. Don't let Sabonis. Sabonis has been cooking everybody. So like, he's gonna get buckets up. He's gonna create shots for others. That's the reality of the situation. I just need more for Mitch. Um, and I don't think that's asking a lot. Like, I need him to be, a, like, give, give me more than you did last night. You know, he he was nine. He had nine points, eight rebounds, four, six shooting. Um, no blocks, no steals, an assist. Congrats. Uh, but, like, he was minus 11 in 20 minutes. And and quite frankly, like, I, he, Tibbs, was, like, was right to go to Hartenstein over him down down the stretch for most of the second half. Yeah, um, Hartenstein, like, Hartenstein, it was the 
it was interesting. Usually, like this was one of the few times Hartenstein was like actually using his like fighting. But I, when I say fighting, I don't necessarily mean like getting low. I mean like the art of like using your forearms to defend without fouling, which is kind of a tricky thing, right? Like in today's NBA, it's, it's pretty tough. But like you have to, if if you can. You, if you do some of that before somebody gets the ball, you can get away with a little bit. You can't really do that as much when they get the ball, but before they get the ball, you can do that. And that that was my main thing with Mitch is like you have to use your arms a little bit to play defense. And because Sabonis is going to use his arms against you and he has a low center of gravity for somebody who's seven feet. So you're already like this is why he cooks everybody, right? Because mm. the only people big enough – and strong enough to defend him one on one, are, I don't know, like Joel Embiid, and like that's that's really it. So you you need help, and you need you need your teammates to help you a little bit with like key stunts and things like that. And then you need to do some battle beforehand. And we know the Knicks aren't super great at like using their help defense to threaten ball handlers when they're close to the hoop because we don't have those like long rangey kind of dudes who can provide you know, who can make Sabonis think twice about the help. Like, no, Sabonis is not worried about any single other Nick helping Mitch near the hoop, right? Like, mm-hmm. that 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 to me is, like, the other reasons why Sabonis gives us trouble in addition to just being really good. It's like, we just, like, there's, like, like I said before, very few guys can stand up to him one-on-one, but a lot of teams have players who can provide some help. But you can't. You can't use your arms to foul when he has the ball, when he's shooting. That's my thing. Like you can you can be physical with him before, but don't like don't play with it. don't play with him around the hoop and like be swiping your arms and, and getting dumb fouls or frustration fouls and stuff. Like his first Mitch's first foul was really dumb. It was like one of his fouls from like two years ago or something. And I don't think the other fouls were quite as bad, but that one I was like, okay, he's this is not gonna be fun for this is not going to be fun for him today. But, like, this also just gets back to kind of what I was saying is, like, really good offenses, they will exploit your best player's weaknesses. Like, RJ's obviously not our best player, but, like, he's going to get exploited, right? Like, Randall is a good isolation player, but there's a difference between, like, a good isolation isolation four or five is still going to get cooked by fast guards that's just the nature of fast guards like when we say oh bam is switchable that doesn't mean he's gonna have anything close to a 50 percent success rate on an island with De'Aaron fox right so julius is definitely not gonna have no 50 percent success rate on an island with De'Aaron fox or even someone like malik monk who's pretty fucking fast so this is what good defenses do like so bonus is gonna be like okay you don't have help defense you don't have centers who's gonna fight like I want to take advantage of that. And then these guys are going to run around 18 screens before he does that, making life miserable for everyone else. So it's definitely like really a, I I was telling you before we started recording, like I just really enjoy watching their offense, the Kings offense, because it really just does fucking, it makes other teams just have to (laughs) make really shitty decisions. And that's why the shot making in the first half was frustrating. Cause I was like, man, like, all things considered, even with Mitch struggling and even with these fucking, like, the Knicks missing a bunch of shots, gimmies, right? Like, like our, like I saw some people talking about RJ's missed shots. I didn't really have any problem with RJ's missed shots. He just like, missed them. Yeah, he just missed them. And some of them were, some of them I thought were fouls, but most of them I thought were, like, even the ones that missed, like, a lot of them resulted in offensive rebounds, and that's not, that's not like an excuse for him to just like brick a bunch of shots, obviously, but like they were fine shots for the most part. Um, so I, I actually went, when they displayed his shot line in the second half and he was four of 12, I was kind of surprised just because I, like a lot of the shots kind of came in the flow and there wasn't many of those plays that kind of annoy me where he's like, I haven't shot in a while. It's RJ time. And he's just like <laughs> ignoring guys. It's like, no, he got the ball and attacked closeouts, you know, shit like that. Um, it was fine. And he just like I would take that shot selection from him, especially in a game where IQ didn't have it and Brunson was still feeling the effects, uh, which we saw even before he left. Like I've told you all before, like even though Brunson struggles on defense, 
he's usually good forever, but there was a couple of plays where he uh you could see him like the Kings would run and you could see him just being like, fuck, I'm not trying to run back that fast right now. <laughs> like <laughs> Julius too. Like they were they're still they need a <laughs> They need a break, and they got one coming up eventually. Like, uh, what is it? Like next week, I think they have yeah, a, they three a decent off. gap. So I need them to get in the the cryo tanks and all that shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing with RJ and Randall, like, they just got to make free throws. Like, this free throw shooting now is just becoming ridiculous. Like, they're twenty of thirty one last night. I think somebody posted this. But they're like, they're, they're they're the worst free throw shooting team in the league, or something over like the last month or something like that. Seventy two percent. Um, like it just, it's, it can't happen. You can't. And like the fact they get to the line so much somewhat mitigates that, but like, you're just leaving points on the table. And, and last night it's a, it's a fucking five point game. They went 20 of 31 from the line. You know, RJ goes six of 10. Randall goes five of nine. Like it, that can't happen. Those are your two guys that get to the line the fucking most basically. And they they left eight points on the table. If they just make two more each, it's a one point game. That's a t- it totally changes the game. Obviously, it doesn't work like that. But like the point is like you're leaving, you're just leaving way too many points on the table. Um, and then like look, looking this at is the, where- split, the splits for RJ by month, it goes 79, 77, 74, 74, 73, and we're still early in March, but 67. And then for Randall, it's uh a little more up and down it's 70 79 75 72 81 69 so i don't know yeah they both they both need to get it together and this is another thing with the knicks um that i tweeted about it a couple of times throughout the last couple weeks but like i'm actually kind of surprised we haven't had what i what in my head i consider like a shooting loss and you can consider that like us shooting like dog shit from three on open shots. You could consider that the other team getting really hot, or you could consider that. Free, now. Yeah. Or you could consider that free throw. Like it's just like an awful free throw shooting game. Cause we're not that, I mean, we're not like, we're just not a good, we're not really a good shooting team. And I feel like we were honestly probably kind of due for some of those. And the free throws are the worst part of it. Right. Cause like if Kevin Herter's is taking, turn around 30 footers and like all right kevin do do you i guess <laughs> like that beam baby but like if you're missing free throws that just that's so much more under our control obviously it's it's kind of frustrating but like i do it is one of those things where i was joking and on twitter and i was like in the playoffs whatever we end up doing like we're gonna have at least one game per series that's probably gonna be just like a shooting where we play fine and we just can't shoot with the other team and then we lose so us getting two in a row, like it fucking blows, but on some level, just the way our offense works and our defense being pretty good, but not great. I kind of, you know, that makes me feel better, weirdly. I'm like, oh, we're kind of do this fucking blows, but like it's been a while, right? Since since before these two games, since we had some shit like that. But yeah, I mean, they the Knicks went 42 of 101 from the field last night. That's 41.6 percent from the field. 13 of 50 from three. That's 26 percent. IQ 50. Yeah, IQ Holy was one shit. of IQ was one of eight. Randall was two of 12. At least we're getting them. RJ 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 was one of eight. Grimes was four of ten. He's the only guy that shot. I mean, Brunson was three of five, but obviously he he went out at halftime, so he didn't even get the benefit of that um, in the second half. So. Um, just a really bad shooting game from and even from three. Brunson's three, like his three threes were tough threes. No, like he had were, one that was wide open in the corner. I mean, he 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 took pretty decent threes, I thought. I, I, no, they, they were good shot shots. Maker. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, that's his job, right? Like, better yeah. make them shits. But like my point is like he had the tough ones. Everybody else, like y'all shits was not, you know, quick release 30 footer at the end yeah. of the shot clock, like Brunson. Yeah. Like, make that shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I look to me, I I'll just say this. I think Quickly, RJ Randall, all those all those guys' threes last night just looked hideous, and they looked like they had <laughs> no arc, like they just had no lift on them. Nice. Um, it looked it looked it looked like it was all arms. Um, so Damn, one of they, eight, two yeah, of they've, twelve, one of they've eight, got to, one of five. Holy yeah, they've shit. got they've got to those those guys specifically have to get it together. I need uh, Obi's just been ice cold from three now for a while. We need him to pick it up, but like. You know, it's hard for him to get, get into a rhythm. I don't even know what to say about it anymore. Like, I, it's just not even worth my time. I'll tell you one thing that one random, like, micro skill thing that kind of annoys me about Obi 
he needs to learn how to either pump fake and then shoot or pump fake sidestep and then shoot because he has a really quick shot and he's tall. So that that is both a great asset, but it's also becoming something he relies on too much. He takes some very difficult, very closely contested threes. Dog, if you just like, fake- I want him to stop shooting threes. That's what I, I want him to fucking stop take. He had five. He took seven shots yesterday. Five of them are threes. Like enough with this shit. Fucking get him going downhill. And I don't care if that's on him. I don't care if that's Tibbs. I don't care what it is. He's not fucking like he's not Richard Lewis, dude. What, like, what are we doing here? The guy's just taking fucking threes. And, like that's all he does now. He doesn't. It has to be. It has to be else. Tibbs because he does. He does two things now. He takes he, threes. His, his three point attempt rate right now is fifty nine point eight. That is a fucking joke. Like, what What the fuck is the point of that? You Don't have it. him. He's taking 11.2 three-point attempts per 100 possessions. I would venture to guess that's the highest on the fucking team. I would almost bet money that's the highest on you. I'm going to look right now. That's yeah, ridiculous. It, it, like, it I'm is sorry. The, it I, is I don't. The team. It's a joke. Like, no, Randall. No, the highest on the team is actually technically Randall is at 11.5. But Randall plays like he shoots way more. His usage is way higher. So, like, it's it's a little bit more understandable that he would take slight, that many threes per hundred possessions. For Obi Toppin to be taking more threes per hundred possessions than Emmanuel Quickly, than Quentin Grimes, than RJ Barrett, than Jalen Brunson, it's fucking absurd. Like, get this fucking guy going downhill. I'm so sick of watching it and it's ingrained in his head now too there was a possession in charlotte i cannot believe this i could not believe his possession it was in transition and Hart, he's running he's filling the lane next to Hart, and like Hart, i love the guy in tra- he's fucking awesome in transition by the way he also kind of gets blinders a little bit in transition he'll just trust the fact that he's fucking super jacked and like Nobody can stop him once he gets ahead of steam. It's, um, like, it's like Giannis in transition and then yeah. Josh Hart. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, and, but like, there was one, he had Obi on the wing, didn't pass it to him. So then Obi floats out for a corner three. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, Obi Toppin in transition, floating out on the fucking wing for a corner three is absurd. I, I couldn't believe that. Yeah. I think it's, it's, totally ingrained in him right now because the only time he doesn't uh outside of transition the only time he doesn't shoot a three he it's when he's curling or when he's faking shooting a three and then doing like his loping kind of drive to the hoop but it's not really a drive to score a lot of the time so his decision tree right now it's almost like deuce like his decision tree is like i shoot or i take some dribbles specifically to move the ball and the only way you're going to get out of that kind of decision tree is if the coaches facilitate that. Um, so, like, all he's doing is either putting up the three or doing these, like, loping kind of circular probes, which are, like, maybe sometimes they end up in drives or floaters, but a lot of the times they end up in passes. And it's just kind of, like, I don't bring it up a lot because it's just kind of sad and I'm used to it, but it is, it remains egregious. Like it's, it's one of the few, like we've talked about the coaching staff and Tibbs making tweaks to leave less on the table and grabbing some of that low hanging fruit throughout the year, right? Like choice transition or like slightly altered defensive coverages that aren't as aggressive or empowering IQ. And like, you know, he's taken advantage. He's done a lot of these low hanging fruits, but continuing to only use Obi as a spacer and then only to have him do these loping drives and never to occasionally have a set play with him rolling or a set play with him getting some pistol action to go downhill is crazy. And it's, it's beyond that. Like they're not, it's like he's, he is like now they're they're not even look guys aren't even looking for him. Like he, he is just a total afterthought unless it's, Oh my God, I'm driving and, I've collapsed the defense and he's wide open. So I'm going to kick it to him for three. That's it. There's nothing else. And he's got in his head now. He never cuts anymore. He never cuts anymore. It's like actually crazy to watch the player he's become this year and comparing that to how he closed last year and how he played at times last year, because we're not using him at all like that anymore. It's, it's pathetic to watch. And like, you're just leaving something on the table like i look obi's gone from new york at the end of this year i'm almost positive i'd be shocked if he's here to start next season 
Um, but like while he's here, it behooves you to use him to in some capacity to his strengths. And the fact that we're not at all, and like the reason I don't talk much about it anymore is one, it, it is what it is, like it's not gonna change. So yeah, like what is the point of me crying about it? Um, but the, the other part is like <laughs> what is the point of me crying about it? He said after he changed yeah. his clothes after a yeah. rage raging rant. <laughs> yeah. But but like the, the other part of it is just that like they they clearly whether this is Tibbs, the organization, or collective, I think it's probably a collective thing. They've clearly established, like, we want to play this very specific way, for better or worse, where we're not going to have a bunch of guys moving off the ball. We're not going to actually have a lot of ball or player movement. We want to, bez- at any point in the game, we're going to have two or three guys on the floor, and those guys handle the rock, and they get isolate glorified isolation possessions. And you know, whether that be a, a pick and roll or like a, a, a post up for Randall or whatever it is, these are basically one-on-one 2v2 actions. You know, they're, they're not incorporating everybody else on the floor. Uh, and what you're trying to do is either those guys cook or they force help and then they spray it out to somebody else, right? And that's that's how the Knicks, if they get ball movement, that's all it is. It's never, you know, again, compare the Kings, compare to that, like their offense to us. It's, it's they're night and day. Um, and, and I'm not saying that's look, they've played well enough and they've done in, well enough in terms of effic- offensive efficiency where you can't necessarily just dismiss like they've cl- they've played well enough where even if I feel like that's not the best way to just in terms of process, that's not how I would prefer it for an offense to work. It doesn't really matter because it's working well. And because of that, like that's what it is like Obi- when Obi's on the floor. Right, even if he's on the floor at the bench, right? Look at who he's on the floor with. In those units, it's quickly and RJ who are like designated to cook, right? And then RJ will go out and it's Brunson. And it's like, and, and so then it's quickly and Brunson can cook. And it's like the other three guys, this isn't just specific to Obi. This is, you know, this is for Grimes. This is for Deuce when he plays. This is kind of for Hart, even though, and, and Hart just, he won't shoot half the time. So he'll just end up turning it into like a, I'm just going to slash and drive into like 15 people. Um, but like that, that's the same thing for him. It's the same thing for all these guys. Like if you're not one of those four dudes, you don't like, you're basically just playing off of what they create for you. And so like, to me, um, I just don't really know like what to say about that because I just, that's the choice they have made in terms of how they want to run their offense. So um, if that's, if again, if that is the choice, then that's what it is. And OB is a casualty of that. But I still think even within that, like they can do more for him. Like, you know, okay. You don't want to, okay. Make him the role, man. That's that, that's not asking a whole lot. I'm not asking you to like draw up some like convoluted complex scheme. Just no fucking use him as the role, man. You know, I, I don't know. It, it's just really frustrating to watch. And like, we used to have, we used to have token possessions with heart in the corner. We, we don't do it anymore. We don't do that anymore. We we have not. I have not seen. I, I genuinely don't remember if we've run a single double drag all year with Obi in the center, which is insane to me because that was a play they ran more than a few times last year and it was really effective. Um, I, I don't get why we don't do that. I get, I don't get why like we just don't throw him lobs ever now. Uh, it's it, it's crazy. And like the, I'll say, like the one thing that I actually worry about because. Uh, when you lean into an offense like this, you're putting it in a guy like quickly. I think you see it the most with, but I think RJ too, like younger dudes that are developing like, yeah, you can keep telling them, read the floor, spray it out, rim reads, blah, blah, blah. But like when there is no ball or player movement and you're basically telling them to cook, like there are, I, I think you're running into the potential for them developing like blinders. And I don't think like, our, our, you know, we've talked about this with RJ where like RJ just, this has constantly been a problem in his career where it's like, yeah, he creates all these openings. He just doesn't read the floor well enough on some of them. But like I see quickly now and like, I don't see him throwing lobs. I don't see him looking for hit head passes in transition as often as I did last year. I don't, I, I think we've become like, and I think part of that is a tactical choice of like, we want to play slow. We want to limit turnovers. We want to control pace. Like we like, I get that. I, I totally get that. I just think like that is 
you're you're potentially hurting and taking away from like things that these guys have flashed previously. And um, you know, like is that bad? Is it good? Is it whatever? Is that on Tibbs? Like, is it some negative development thing? I don't know. I, I don't, I really don't. And I, I think Tibbs, you know, we thought I was like, I think Tibbs is actually pretty decent at development. I, so I'm not going to sit here and act like he's ruining these guys' careers. I just worry that like, you're taking something away that really could be a strength for us. And specifically for a guy like quickly and Obi obviously benefits from that. Um, and and I, I just worry about that. So like, you know, it is what it is. Also, by the way, I just need RJ to like, I don't know what's been going on with him lately. Like he's the best lob passer on the team, but lately he's been throwing fucking lob passes like <laughs> to the right of Mitch. And I'm like, what's going on here? You like, think he's throwing a Wemby, bro? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know what is going on with him. Just please, like, please just stop that. That's been weird. Like that's the that's it's the one. Couple, pass. It's like two. It's like one or two baskets just that were just like going up in smoke every game because he feels like throwing it at like the corner of the backboard or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's so, <laughs> it's so weird. It's like literally just been the last three or four games too. And I'm like, what, what, why did this start happening? Stop, stop doing that. Um, but yeah, like, again, I, I think the Knicks lost a game yesterday. Like we can sit here and talk about, you know, I talked about this last night on a rundown, but it's like, you know, their rotation stuff. There's all these things that we can debate, but the, it's not debatable. What is not debatable is they lost the game because they couldn't make wide open threes. And there's, that's not about coaching. That's not about lineups and subs. And, you know, it, it, you could, if you want to say that it was, you know, the reason they're missing some of these shots in these last couple of games is because they're tired because they got ran, you know, into the ground in that Celtics game. Fine. But like, this is just a modern NBA, dude. Yeah. Like you're gonna like this is what I was saying before. Like we're gonna it's been a while, so we just are not used to it as fans, but like in a high three point rate league, you're gonna have like we saw it with fucking Boston versus us. Well, like they were they shot like dog shit, and it's not because like here, we here's were an example strapping them up from the three point line every possession. <laughs> here's an example. Like Desmond Bain might be he's what, like one of the top five shooters yes in a number yeah. of ways but also like he's just, gonna go down as one of the greatest shooters of yeah. all time i've but been like, on the record saying that but like just in terms his pure consistency like he he's like one of those guys who like his bad shooting game is like you know three for eight or something right? for three <laughs> like he's it's but but earlier this week they played at the lakers okay desmond bain i'm just gonna read out his line 35 minutes played seven points Three of fourteen from the field, oh five from three. He was oh of nine from the field until the fourth quarter, and so like my point is more isn't that like like it's like if Desmond Bain has a bad shooting game, this is Desmond Bain who's like this year so far he's forty seven. His splits are forty seven, forty one from the field, forty seven from the field, forty one from three, and and he shoots volume three like. And he ain't getting to the rim a lot. That's a lot of mid-range jumpers, too. <laughs> right. So, like, if he has a bad shooting game, like, like, and and, and I, this is where I probably I have a little more sympathy for quickly than, like, RJ. Quickly has, like, been basically a 40% three-point shooter now for a couple months. Yeah, couple, like three months, effectively. Mm-hmm. So, like, if he has a 0 for 1 for 8 game from three, yeah, I in real time, I was, like, super annoyed by it. I'm like, what the fuck? Can you just make, can you just do the thing where you turn into prez for like a yeah. second yeah. can you can you just make the threes do you your button? job yeah. be a professional yeah. just make the threes um but like like i i can deal with that shit because he's done it for a while like i get the more the the bigger frustration that people have with rj because he's been he's been he's been so streaky this year it's like he can't every time i think like okay he's put together two shooting games in a row he's about to like Get one going. of nine in the first half yeah. coming soon. <laughs> I just, I just don't, he, he can't seem to like find any consistency. And like, you would have hoped that with Brunson out in the second half yesterday, that would actually help him. Right. Cause he's going to get more touches and it just didn't, it just didn't, it didn't seem to, to get him going. And so like, we'll see. Um, Hopefully he can turn it around offensively for the end of the year. Because again, as we've talked about, like, I do think the defense has come around nicely since in the since all star break, not that he's like locking guys down, but no, it's gone from tire fire to like, all right, yeah, he's not he's not like killing you out there on defense anymore. Right. He was actually killing you on defense for a while <laughs> to start yeah. this year. So like that's a massive improvement. It's now it's just like, can you just 
find some consistency offensively. And like, you know, if you want to take some solace in this stuff, like, you know, you look at what like Warriors fans are saying about Jordan Poole this year. You know, they're all like, it's the same thing. And it's a lot of like, it, it reminds me a lot of the shit that like Heat fans are saying about Tyler Harrow last year. So like, you know, look, guys, this happens with young guys. Like they can have down years even, right? And it's part of your growth. Like I'm not saying don't be worried about RJ. I just think like, I don't know, a night like last night, it just didn't strike me as a performance of like the, oh my God, I'm worried about RJ stuff that normally occurs for me. Right. I, exa- like I'm not worried about more J- RJ any more than normal. Like I'm always worried about RJ. But yesterday is not like, oh, fuck. Now that I saw that. Right? Well, it just like, wasn't one of those games where I'm like, what the fuck are you doing out here, dude? Like, yeah. what are your decisions right now? It's yeah, not he, one of those games. The threes were, you know, they were fine threes. It wasn't yeah, he's wide like, open. I, yeah, I needed, like, I wanted to take bro. those like, fucking shots. Yeah, like, it's, it's a, I don't know, man. He's, why, why everybody else Drew Hamlet work with turns into fucking pages to Yakovich, man? Get this. Fix this man. Team Canada, Steve Nash, do something. Uh, I, I Andy Routens, what's he doing these days? Isn't his coach, isn't his pops involved in Team Canada? Uh, Nick, Nick Legend, Andy Routens, or he was, no, he was a broadcaster, not the coach. Brunson is um, out for tomorrow, by the way, against the Clippers. So, um, look, this is, this is what I want to say. I, I actually want to say this, but before I get into that, I do need to do an ad read, which is super exciting. I'm sure everybody is thrilled for this. Let's fucking go. Ad read time. Um, I'm going to pull it up. It's going to be fucking great. NBA fans, it's time to bring the hoops action to the palm of your hand with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet $5 and then $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, for a limited time, all new and existing customers can get a no sweat same game parlay every day. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Opt in and place a same game parlay uh, on any NBA game. And if it doesn't hit, you'll get a bonus bet back. Download the app now and sign up with code TBPN. New customers can bet $5 on the NBA and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook app, an official sports betting partner of the NBA with code TBPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Um, what I was going to say is this. The the Charlotte game that quickly had where he he shot poorly, didn't play well. I mean, nobody played well. Really. I mean, there was a lot of bad play, I guess I should say, in that game. I didn't care. I, I'm fine with that type of bad game because, to me, he was still being aggressive. He was trying to make things happen. Um, like, you've got to be willing to have a five of 17 night in that role as a starting point guard, primary facilitator, whatever, however you want to phrase it, you've got to be willing to have a bad night. I thought last night he was ice cold to start the game. He didn't make a shot, obviously in the first half. Then Brunson goes out to start. He's out at halftime. Um, And I thought he came out in the second half and was just way too deferential the entire half to Julius and to RJ. And um, like, I get it. And this is like, this is the hardest part for any young player. I think is like, I get that when you're shooting poorly, you're kind of like, I don't want to shoot my team out of the game. I don't want to be an asshole and just keep fucking chucking shots up. Right. But, but there also comes a time where no motherfucker, like they need you to get shots up and they need you not forget getting shots up. You've got to look to attack. You've got to look to shift the defense. And then, like, it doesn't need to be like, oh, you get all the way to the rim and dunk on somebody or, like, get all the way to the rim. and sp-. like It can just be like, let me just get into that around the nail, around the elbow, take a step inside the lane, and and then I spray it out to somebody. I spray it to Randall. And then now he gets to attack a slightly rotated defense. It can just be like that. But you've got to do that thing. And... um. I'm actually like, we'll see if this, you know, we'll see what happens. The Clippers are just a fucking weird ass team. I want to see how he responds. I'm very curious to see how he responds because he's obviously played at a high level for a few months now. I want to see how he responds. He had None a- of these Clippers guards can guard him. Yeah. But and- they do got a lot of random long boys that they can throw. 
Yeah, and so I would. I just want to see how he responds to a couple of bad games in a row and a game yesterday where he just, quite frankly, didn't have it at all, right? Like, we could see mm-hmm. that from the jump, I thought. So, like, um, I'm excited to see that, and I, I do want to see him, like, I don't care if you sh- if you start the game 0 for 6, 0 for 7. That can't affect, like, how aggressive you are, and you can't stop doing your job. You can't stop doing the role that you're in. And, like... I and and to that effect, like I also need Julius. Like the way he played in that Celtics game to me, what like I know he had seven turnovers, but he was not like, well, Brunson's out. I'm just gonna cook. Like this is me. I gotta. I I didn't like how Randall played yesterday. Yeah, not trying to kill him. Like it was a tough game. It was a weird game. Obviously, Brunson going out affected a lot of things. But like, I didn't love how he played yesterday. I want to see him be a little bit more like not deferential, but just play with guys. Try to help like go run a DHO with quickly. Go run a DHO with RJ. Go go do that with Grimes. Like go go do a bunch of things. And it's like I like, I know he does some of that. I just thought his balance yesterday, especially down the stretch, was annoying. I mean, that turnover he had late in the game was just a fucking killer. And it was also just like Tibbs, can, can you not run that play? Like we we know I get Julius is your best player especially with Brunson out, but can you not run an elbow isolation, stagnant ISO for him out of a timeout? Like we, I knew exactly how that possession was going to end. It was so predictable, you know, um, because we've seen it like, and actually I think they brought it up maybe on the TNT broadcast. After that, he did, but like, yeah, that, that shot against Miami was fucking awesome. But let's also not forget, like he nearly got stripped twice in that play. You know, like he he nearly lost the ball twice in that play. So yeah, the shot ended up going in, and I'm happy for Julius. Really, truly happy for him to kind of have that moment because he struggled so much in crunch time at various points this season. But like he has struggled a bunch of times in crunch time, crunch time this season, especially in that exact type of scenario. Just don't do that. Even if you want to run an isolation for him, just run a token pick and roll with him and 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 quickly, so the defense has to like react to something before. You give the ball to Randall, and they just get to like you don't. They just got to load up. You don't just let defenses load up with nothing else going on. You know, it's just those are the things that like bothered me a little bit more about last night. But that's uh, why I think yeah. uh, right now I just I don't like our odds versus the Clippers. They're like two different teams. Obviously, they're one team with Kawhi and PG, and then they're another team without both of those guys. But like Ty Lu. Is just so good. I know he's going to take these fucking wings that they got and all that shit and just dare dare the Knicks to dribble through it. And if Brunson's not playing, it'll be very evident early on whether we are strategically prepared for that because Brunson's pretty much the only player who's capable of really out-dribbling pressure. And even that is usually like... Even we've talked about it before. Even with Brunson, it's sometimes it's like you don't have to do that, dude. You could just like pass it. <laughs> but like the rest of the team, especially Julius and RJ, who are gonna have the ball in their hands a lot, they're really not made to do that. So we're gonna see a lot of that, presumably from uh from Ty Lu's long boys. And if we're not dealing good with that shit, then it might be a it might be a really long night. But if we can get past that shit. They really don't scare me at the rim. Like, Zubak is fine, and they have a lot of long boys, but none of these long boys can really jump. So, like, we should be able to eat at the rim and at the free throw line and get offensive rebounds and all that shit. It's just the point of attack stuff that uh, I'm worried about. And they would, on you know, to bring it back to quickly, quickly's the best passer on the team. So, this would be a perfect time for quickly to remember that and just, uh, you know, balance the attacking because his handle's pretty good. You know, it's not Brunson, but it's pretty fucking good. It's definitely second best on the team. And if I, I wouldn't be surprised if if he has a pretty good game against them because he's going to be playing more with Brunson out, and he's really the one player on our team who's kind of equipped to counter that stuff because he's comfortable calling audibles, even though yesterday for whatever reason he was kind of on cruise control like you said 
So it, I just, it'll be I just interesting lost, to watch. I just think he had a he knew he didn't have it. And yeah. like th- this is this is always why like it's also the defense too, right? Like this is what happens some t- like in addition to the minutes load he's had, this is also what happens when you gotta chase motherfuckers for the whole game and run into Sabonis like a hundred times. Yeah, and I think um I, I think some of this is like you know, there's sometimes like you have to walk like a bad shoot. Not all bad shooting games are made equal. Right. So like there are nights where a guy can go seven to 20 from the field for 21 points. And you live with that because that's what your team needed from you on that night. And what, what, what I, what I believe, you know, what I truly believe is like the Knicks needed him last night to be okay going two of 15, 14, and not even necessarily taking more shots, but again, just being more assertive. Um, and like, th- they need that from him. He can't, this is, this would be the worst time for him to go into one of those like weird 10 game, like, you know, 10 games where he just can't do anything on offense for whatever reason. Um, this would be a terrible time to revert to that. They need him without, if he doesn't get it going here, like they're in trouble without Brunson there. There's no way they can win this game quite frankly. So um, it's on him and it's on RJ too. Like, look, we can sit and talk about quickly all day, but like RJ has Brunson's out, dude. At some point I, I've seen, I, I know RJ has the ability to step up, but like you're the fourth year guy. You got the contract. It is time to fucking show it up. Like, like, show, good, show us. and this show is up. where I can get people's frustration. It's like good shot selection and good effort on defense is not enough in a lot of cases like he's paid enough that the bar should be higher than that 